you just a short demo of the calibration app. Here is the icon for it. If we click on that, it'll bring us into the app. Um, using these icons, pretty much left to right, uh, first, we're, our focus will be on reading in and importing some test data. We can import from Excel, from ASCII, text files, and from CSV files. And we've made it very free format. I'm going to open up an Excel file. And um, the free formatting is, is in an effort so that people do not have to save additional um, files, just put in a format for our tool. So we allow both time and frequency based test data and we base we offer uniaxial biaxial uh, planar simple shear etc and we'll talk about generic a little bit later um, so this the first couple of columns are uniaxial I'll highlight them just like that um, say next I can tell it what is in every column it remembers it from the time that I used it before so these are correct column headers and when I say next, if the data did not have time as a column, we'll assign time uh, based on a user selectable feature and then say import. I paused the video for just a bit while I read in some planar, some planar test data and some equal biaxial test data and some hydrostatic or volumetric test data. So I have a variety of plots here on my screen, all automatically generated by the tool. Um, and one thing we work on with every release is, is data cleanup tools. We recognize that's a big part of calibration is making sure your test data is usable by the calibration tool. I notice that my volumetric test data has many more points than I really need. So I come over here and um, click on the volumetric test data. And it brings me into my repair tool or data cleanup tool. We offer currently decimation, uh, some zero shift uh, repairing and smoothing of test data. I'm going to decimate. It tells me that there are 245 data points. And I'm going to make a guess that probably only 40 points are needed, maybe even less. Um, evaluate shows me what, um, what that would be in terms of saving 40 data points. This commits the changes. And then I say OK, and I've decimated the test data. Um, so we do have this idea of having uh, an analytical mode and, and a um, numerical mode. The analytical mode has hyperelastic and hyperfoam uh, material models available. This calibration will just be a simple hyperelastic material. I'll say OK. And a root of voice comes up by default, just alphabetically. I'd rather work, say, with a, a YO model. And we have initial values populated for every parameter, but these are readily changeable by the user. Um, and then we could reset them using our reset button. And then this icon executes a calibration. In analytical mode, it's, it's instantaneous. Um, we also, if we have some experience with the last merge, we might know that by the time we've collected all this different kinds of test data, that an Ogden N equal 3 model might be a very good choice. Um, so again, hit calibrate. And we do, we get a very nice response. Um, the tool by now is, is pretty full featured. Um, I want to change gears a little bit and just show you all of the, if you were to switch to numerical mode. And numerical mode uses abacus standard to evaluate uh, your stress and strain from any uh, time and evaluate your stress from any of time strain information that is test data and we have a hierarchical um, arrangement of all the material models that we currently support all those that have linear elasticity as their basis um, we're just beginning to have some non-metal, that is non-Mises uh, yield. So we've added crushable foam and, and beginning to add Drucker, Prager, and some other geomechanics material models. Um, I could open all and show you every single material model here. Um, we're working on mean field homogenization. Uh, we've had parallel rheological framework for quite some time because it's of great interest to the tire industry. Um, so we're fleshing out this list of material models with every release. And um, with that, just to keep this um, demonstration short, we'll, we'll end here.